want to welcome everybody to a very special artist talk. We are here at St. James Brewery in St. James, and we are joined by artists Ellen Haleyship and Gina Mars uh, for a conversation with these two wonderful artists currently in the exhibition Chroma Tenacity. I want to thank St. James Brewery for having us here today, and I also want to thank our two sponsors, Jefferson's Ferry and Suffolk County Department of Economic Planning and Development. And with that, we want to hear from our two fabulous artists. Um, please, feel free to ask each other the questions. Okay. And well, thanks a lot for setting this up. First of all, I think it's a really cool idea and um, it's great to have the chance to actually talk to Gina in person. <laughs> Likewise. We, we haven't met in person before, so this is a great opportunity. So thanks to you and to Ned. So thank yes, you. thank everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I would start by saying that uh, so many people have commented to me what a great pairing this is of your ceramic work in my paintings. and when I brought the paintings over and your ceramics were there and Kate would go, oh my God, look how this looks next <laughs> to this painting or look how this looks, it brings out this color and that color. It was just so wild and such a cool thing to see. And um, so I think we should, I would love to hear about how you do what you do. Because um, I, I just think this, that synchronicity or whatever that is, well, forgetting about the fact that I know how we each made or these bodies of work which was yes. also like this so um i guess i want to know how we how our processes are similar and how they're different well when i first saw the show i hadn't seen it till the opening reception and i was really blown away when i got there because everything just worked so well the larger than life paintings and the color and they brought out the color in the ceramic pieces. And I, I was just in awe of the whole thing. So, you know, sometimes you really don't think that much about the curator um, and the people arranging the show. And I feel that you guys working at Gallery North and arranging the show really just, it was just amazing how you did that. It worked perfectly. So that was the first time, you know, I really got to see Ellen's work in person and it was just larger than life. And then when Ellen and I first started talking, she was like, you know, I think about these, uh, the past and, um, you know, ancient um, art and all of these things. And I was like, well, wait a minute, that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> and I'm like, are you serious? And and so we felt like we just clicked, and even though it was paintings and ceramic, we, we were just co-joined, you know, for this show. And um, I just feel like we have so much to talk about. I was like, couldn't believe like the colors, like the colors in what, like this lavender painting of mine has turquoise, and then, then there's your turquoise pot right next to it, as if we had discussed ahead of time, let's right. use this color, oh yeah, and let's also use this and this and this. Um, it was just like really crazy. So, well, how well everything worked. I'm imagining someday I'll have an Ellen in the house, <laughs> you know, with the pottery and yeah, like just like I would love to see that. Yeah, it just like was really great how how they do play off one another and work so well. So, and I think it's also um, important because to show our work in the future, not a lot of people think oh ceramic and painting, but it actually can be such a wonderful pairing. So um, it's something for other art galleries and people who want to show our work to think about. Yeah, I had seen um, a ceramic and painting, like a, a scene on video anyway, about a show earlier in the fall. And then when I heard that we were doing this, I was so excited because I just thought the, the, sculpt, the ceramic sculpture and the paintings were just like so great together. And I was really excited to have a, you know, that similar opportunity with your work, so I think it's a, it was really great, great idea. Well, I think too, like with the pieces I had in the show, they're very ancient, ritualistic, and um, uh, they're very bold in nature. 
and um, a lot of the pieces with the rounded tops, I call them portals, um, because they make me think of the past, um, historically, um, ancient sites such as Petra, and um, just really, really old ancient relics. Um, I was also a social studies teacher, so history is important to me, and I like to put that little element you know, in my pieces, and um, they just, they bring good things, good vibes when I think about them. You know, I, I look to the past, and then I look to the future of my art through the pieces that I've made. And I think having the splash of color in a painting or in ceramics just really stops you in your tracks, and you just, you know, you look at it, and say, wow, where, where did that color come from? And with the paintings, you're using the pigments. But with ceramic, I'm developing all of those colors through raw materials that have been combined and then sprayed on the piece or painted. Um, they're treated in a certain way before I fire them. So I'm really going through a process of creating them, firing them, experimentation. You know, Raku, you never know what you're going to get. So 30 years later, people are, people are like, what is your glaze? You know, how do you do this? Um, how, why does it look so good every time? But they don't realize that in 30 years, I've never had the same exact piece, the same exact glaze come out the same. It's always a different look on every single piece. You, you just don't know. You can get a little close to what you want, but not exactly. Um, all the time. So it's the element of surprise um, mixing these raw elements from the earth. I think that's so interesting. First, I just want to respond about your thing about history because I'm a super archaeological student. Love ancient Egypt, <laughs> ancient Greece. So this stuff about, you know, this queen's burial chamber, mm -hmm. like, it just it really speaks to me. And then when I heard about, you know, your idea of like these ritual objects, <laughs> it was like, that's crazy. And the also, I feel a very uh, similar, I, I can relate to what you say about how things are never the same, because my work apparently is always evolving. So I'm, whatever I just did for this show, I'm doing something else different now. And I did something different before that. And so I can't tell you, you know, like, you know, why I did something before. I, maybe I remember why, but... Um, it's like this continual process. I'm just continually going forward with my work. And there is also in my work a big element of chance because mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm putting on next. It's a process. I'm a process-based abstract painter. So I'm in this process as I'm painting it, just trying to go with a kind of a flow. And I can't tell you what I'm gonna be doing. So I think so I really relate to what you said about like there's an element of, of chance in what you're doing and you could not repeat the same result, um, you know, of the glaze, for example, from years ago. I, I just, I find that really interesting. Well, I think that's also an important point because sometimes as an artist, I, I feel like people expect the same thing year after year. But that's not really who we are. We have to grow and experiment and we don't know where it's always going to go. So to see artists evolve is a very important thing. And I think that, especially being a potter sculptor, people are like, oh, you know, we were looking for this, we saw this year after year. But I really think sometimes you have to just let go and grow in your work and let it just happen. And it's going to be what it's going to be. And people are just going to have to live with what you're doing, usually in a good way, but you have to have growth and experimentation. And sometimes I struggle with that, you know, but lately I've just been kind of letting it rip. I think it's because of the pandemic. I've just opened up so much and I'm making things I never thought that I would do. I can't tell you the number of times someone says, well, I really like that painting with the, you know, the, this thing. And I said, oh, well, I painted over it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not here anymore, and it, that happens. So you know, that's what it is. Yes, you know? and so. we can let ourselves do that and live with it, and good things will happen. 
I just feel that is so important, but it can be a struggle because, you know, the people who purchase your work or admire your work, you know, they expect a certain outcome. Well, can I ask you a question then? Like, for sure. example, like with my work, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I have like a general idea of the kind of impression I want to get from what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Do you, does that, do you relate to that at all as far as like your, your path that you like your ceramic work do you have an idea like i wanted to have give it this idea or have this feeling about it or something or like what makes you go forward to the next project or the next piece or the next body of work i mean and how do you how do you see what what you're doing even if, if there's so much chance in it anyway i mean how do you what story do you tell yourself about your work to go forward as i guess what I well i always try to keep a vessel in the work so there's always going to be some sort of vessel to hold something and then the top will change you know it'll be a sculpture a portal an animal um so I, I try to keep to that theme where it can be a vessel but the tops will be changing okay. all the time um because I've always had this feeling about the bulbous vessel. And it's one of the first things I, I've ever made. It's extremely challenging to make round spherical vessels. They always collapse and I feel like I've just mastered it over all these years. Um, but then again, you know, who knows what the spring will bring. I'm, I'm actually I'm inching towards an installation where, um, I'm thinking about having something instead of just the vessel here, I'm gonna have it come from the ceiling. So I'm gonna make like all sorts of hot air balloons and crazy, you know, zeppelins and they'll be very bulbous, but they're not gonna be the vessel in front of you. They're gonna be hanging down. So it'll be this more like suspended. More suspended, suspended instead of like being thing. stationary on, on, a, on a table or a shelf. Or yeah, yeah. And add other elements you know, like um, found objects, things like that. So I'm excited to branch out in that direction. Yes. <laughs> that does sound exciting. It does, we'll see, we'll see. Right. I know with me, well, I just, I really love the paint. So whatever I can do with paint, I just love it. And so like lately I've put more paint on. Instead of like a circle of paint now, I add more paint, like maybe a different color, and have certain areas that are really built up because I just love that material. And I'm trying to like do more with the dripping or more with the palette, for example. I found an interesting palette. That's what maybe drives me forward. Um, now I have a new palette I'm working with for the spring, and that's driving me forward. And wow. My shapes maybe are getting bigger instead of smaller. I feel like I'm in this like pulsating universe of things that I do, but it's never back and forth. It's still always forward like a spiral, I feel like. Now, how long does it take you to complete one of those large paintings? Depends. Um, one of the paintings in the show I did last year, and I, it wasn't really happening, and I didn't know what to do with it, so I just left it. And then I painted over it, okay. and I got one of these. So that, was, that stood around for like a year. But sometimes it can just be a few weeks, it can be a month, six weeks, hmm. where I get to a point and I have to put it aside for a number of weeks because I get like, well, I don't know where to go, but it's not done. Hmm. So I have to wait until maybe I get an idea. Okay. And it just, that's how it is. You just have, and that's why I like working on, like, that's a question for you. I like, I like working on a number of pieces at once so that if I get stuck someplace, I'll pick another piece up. I can always get some kind of information from the piece I'm working on and maybe mm -hmm. it'll help me on the piece I'm stuck with. Which isn't so easy with ceramics because the clay dries out. Oh, if you don't handle it a certain, within a certain length of time? Yeah, so you have to cover it with plastic or a big Tupperware or it's going to dry out. So that's a difference. I need my stuff to dry out mm. if I want to like have paint, older paint, not have it be mushed up together. Sometimes you want that wet into wet thing. Yeah. But sometimes you need the whole thing to dry so that you can put another layer of another color and have it be something separate 
that you can look at instead of being like mushed around. So that's mm -hmm. interesting. Um, there's a new clay out there that uh, is becoming very popular and I've started to actually make it. It's called paper clay and people mix paper products um, into their clay. And that means that you can actually build something with it and then if it breaks, fix it right there, fix it yeah. after it's fired. Wow. It's like this, you know, super clay. So I've started working with that, plus it's also lightweight after it's fired. So a lot of ceramics are heavy, but this is light as air because you've got, you know, the organic material burning out um, when you fire it. So that's been nice. That's um, because the other day I made an octopus, a big octopus, and I noticed some of the um, tentacles were missing. And I was like, okay, who did it? Was it my daughter? No. Could it be my husband? Maybe he fibs a lot. Who could it be? Oh, it was my daughter's deaf cat that I have to tolerate, which is actually a wonderful cat. But I actually saw the cat come down again, walk right by, and then just you know, like, take a tentacle off, oh. chew it off. And I was like, what? Yeah. I don't think so. So I got the paper clay out, put the tentacle back on, and I was so happy that it worked. That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah, but I locked the cat up because, you know, I can't have that, eating the tentacles. Let me yes. ask you something about signing. Do you sign your work anywhere on the piece? I do. Where do you do that? I where, sign. Where on the piece? Always on the bottom, G E M, my initials. And um, I never put the date. Like when I first started 30 years ago, I would write like May 1st, you know, 1989. But then I was like, what am I dating myself? It's ridiculous. So don't do that. I just put my initials and um, no stamp. I just use a simple pencil and I just sign like that. Yeah, so also that big giant piece you had in the back room of the gallery, the wonderful pink piece. Oh, it's a big magenta piece. I absolutely am in love with uh, that piece. Thanks. You have to tell me more about that um, piece. Well, that was like, a, actually it was just last January that I started painting big coalescing shapes. It was just last January. So I would have three shapes on a 48 by 48 canvas. And I did a few of them. And as I kept doing them, the shapes kind of got smaller <laughs> and smaller. So by July, they were these little fireflies <sighs> and this big, big thing. And um, it was really fun for me to change the size of the shapes. <laughs> so that's that's how that developed. And the magenta, it was just, I was just in love with magenta. And I used it for months and months. And then I noticed that in the fall, the magenta turned into this dark purple which a lot of the paintings have also now, the ones I did in the fall. So, um, and I have to say, for someone who is just a process-based painter, I am affected by the seasons mm. and by the light. And because ha you have to be to do magenta all summer and then be doing purple. I mean, and now I'm into pink. I mean, with the hopefully one spring to come and yellow. I, I, I do understand that I am affected by the seasons. And do you mix any of the pigments yourself, or do you just have I use, special? No, I use them out of the tube. Okay. I love using them out of the tube, and I love using them. I will mix, sure, but I, if I take something out of the tube, I'll take something else out of the tube and put it right on top of it. Wow. <laughs> I just love that. I just love that materiality of the paint. I don't know what else to say. And I love seeing what I can do with the paint, how I can make it move on the canvas, like with more medium, with a lot of medium, it'll just go like a race car. And I like also the chance element, if I'm adding medium to the paint, having the drip, I don't know how it's gonna go. I can kind of, you know, push it a little and I can take it away a little, but I love this idea of having the color of the drip combined with whatever is underneath it and having that be a way to further the painting along. So that's a, like a chance element. The, oh, the other thing I've been doing for chance is um, I'll take the painting and I'll put it on the palette paper with the paint. Or if it's a big picture, I'll take the palette paper and press it onto the painting. Okay. So 
and it's the colors I'm using anyway, so it's fine. But it'll just kind of wake up the whole composition. And I'll, oh yeah, okay. There you go. And I'll do that. And so there's that. It's chance, but it's not. It's not chance, but it's chance. I'm thinking. So, I don't know if that you can relate to that. I can. I'm yeah. finding it so inspiring that I'm thinking of actually trying the oils on a ceramic piece. Well, wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, like yeah. a nice collaboration. That would you know, be cool. I have a box that has a, a large surface and just try something, you know, with would, the oil. Would paint. that work? Can you put oil paints on a, a ceramic piece? Or does it have to be fired first and have a certain, like, glaze over it or something? So I that think the oil doesn't, like, like you know, mm -hmm. kind of, um, you know, like, just creep into the, into the, uh, the clay? I think I have to fire it to a specific temperature, and then I can do it. I think it is not going to be a problem. Because I know like with, I have gesso canvas, that's mm -hmm. what I work on. If it was raw canvas, the paint would just like bleed into the canvas and it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It kind of sits on top of the gesso thing, so. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play around with it, see what happens. I mean, I can recreate to an extent some of the colors in ceramic glazes, um, but I'm interested in trying a different that would be so cool. Medium to mix on the ceramic surface. Is there a way to put, is your work powdered? Is the, are the glazes in a powder form ever or? They start in a powdered form. Then I mix them and I can either dip them, spray them or paint them um, on the pieces. There's one glaze I use. It's so difficult to use that I have to mix dish detergent in it because it's like oil and vinegar. So you mix the dish detergent and it's just enough to make it stay on the piece, but then you can't touch it. So when you go to fire it, you're kind of like sticking your hand in there, trying to pick it up and get it into the kiln because if you touch it, it will come right off. So I'm like wondering if I do one of my paintings and it's wet is, I mean, I know there are all kinds of powders I can put on that are specifically for people working with oil paint, but what would happen with using one of your types of like powders or glazes on the oil paint, I wonder? I mean, would it just like sink in and then disappear? Or, you know, is there, can they, can you combine any of that? Like you just said to put some oil paint on your ceramics, can it go the other way too, do you think? I think it could if you use mason stains, which are just pure pigments, just like in yeah. the paints. Yeah. And mix them, um, you know, with certain binders to get it to stay. And put it on top of the dried paint. Yeah. Once, my, once something is dry, and then put it on the, on top of that and see what happens. Absolutely, and then spray it with a sealer. I think it's definitely doable. Um, I'd love to try something like that. Maybe we could work together sometime. Yeah, just some sort like of little with some, like I could bring some, like a little canvas, a couple little ones, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. my paints, and you could like play around. That would. Sounds like it could be really fun. I've they, never heard of this. So. There are some possibilities now I'm thinking about that, you know, could really be interesting. Because I know that um, painters will, can use the, the powder the, of the actual pigment, the powdered pigment, and you can put it on your painting just as powder, mm -hmm. or you can mix it with oil and make a paint out of it. You know, there are different ways to do that, but I wonder if pigment-wise it would work with the materials that you use. Yeah. There, there is a Pennsylvania artist, um, Mitch Lyons, he recently passed away, but his whole um, idea was to create uh, paintings on clay with the pigments and the chalks, and he would, you know, crush them and put them on his slabs and roll them, um, and they would look like these incredible ab abstract paintings. The pigments that he used, were they for clay or were they for paint, for oil paint? They were for both. Oh. Um, and he has a book out on oh. that. Um, so that's something that I could revisit. And I should read it too. What, what, what's his name? Uh, Mitchell Lyons. L-Y-O-N-S? Yeah. Oh, okay. Very famous for his work. He used to do workshops with me. Um, that's so interesting. That's, that's, that's another idea I have to visit. That would be fun. I would love to spend a, an hour or two, you know, together with just like experimenting with the materials. 
Absolutely. Be really Although fun. I think an hour is going to turn into a couple. Of hours. Well, you know, short and sweet to start with. You know, yeah. just have a couple of things. I think that would be so much fun. Speaking of collaboration, I understand you collaborated on the name for this exhibition. Oh my gosh! Yes. How did you come up with the name for this Gina exhibition? Found the name. <laughs> and I said, there's a name. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that what happened? Laugh out of that. So <laughs> you found the definition of color. Yes. Okay. I was looking up the definition of, um, um, I think it was chromacity. Um, chromaticity. Chromaticity. Okay. And um, I didn't have my glasses on. And I was like, oh, wow, I got it. It's chromatinacity. And everybody went nuts, and I was like, oh, it wasn't? That oh. was, mean you made that up? Yeah. Oh, that was so <laughs> funny. I didn't oh, have my glasses on. So I thought that was like a definition. You just made up. I thought it was, too, until it's I put good. the glasses yeah. But it was perfect. It was like, that's, <laughs> that is it. That's and so then funny. I was like sworn to secrecy, so I'd go to work, and everybody's like, okay, so what's the name? And I'm like, I, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm not allowed. Uh, Gallery North made me sign papers. I'm not allowed to talk about the name until it comes out. Like it was a really big thing, and it was a big thing, but it just kind of happened. That's so funny. Which yeah. is the best way, I yeah. think. That's true. You know, because it worked out. It's it's absolutely perfect. One last closing question: You had mentioned being an empty nester now with all your pieces out of the house. Would you guys like to talk about that? What's it like to have all the pieces not at home right now? Oh boy. <laughs> I love it because then it clears my mind. You know, I'm like, all the pieces are out and now I can think about something new. And that's exactly what I did. I started all these new projects. I actually went in a totally different direction. I went in a gardening direction. So I made these giant spheres and I put faces on them and they're all gonna go in the garden, like these huge, big faces yeah I saw something you posted That's and I had cool. never done that yeah so I, I was able to open my mind by having an empty uh, house and um, lots of other things too I actually created a bunch of spheres the other day which are all woven so they're hollow but they're actually woven globes with strips of clay mm. um, so it's a it's a wonderful thing having the the empty studio I love it I think in my case, um, I think like every single time I've had a show, I've already started a new body of work before moving the current work into the show. So okay. it was more of seamless. With this, I did everything and I brought it to you, to the gallery, and I was like, oh, where did everybody go? It was just like, oh my God, I'm all by myself. <laughs> And it didn't feel good. It did not feel good. I was like in shock, I have to say. But slowly, I mean, I had an idea and then I, now I've been working small again, which is how I start. And I'm repopulating my space and I'm, I'm moving ahead. But it was a bit of a shock, I have to say. This time I was, wasn't was expecting to feel this kind of, um, I don't know what it was. It was just like a bit of a shock. Like your babies are gone and... <laughs> just not babies like people where are my friends you yeah. where, where did you guys go <laughs> nobody's around but now I, you know it's now it's fine it just was um a very odd sensation i had never encountered before mm -hmm. because as i said normally i'm already moving ahead i'm into the next body of work when i'm when i have you know i'm lucky enough to have a show somewhere so it was just like a funny a funny thing but, and plus I was so much into creating this specific body of work mm -hmm. for this show and working very, very hard to make work on like a schedule and I was really, really into it. And then all of a sudden it was done. So I'm not, I'm not really used to working like that, you know, mm -hmm. like really, really intensely. And then it's, I'm, I'm more of like a, uh, like this. <laughs> Wow. Well, I can't wait this to one see felt like this. <laughs> what you're doing next. It's so exciting. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it is. It is. We're lucky. We are. We're very fortunate, I feel, because not everybody gets to do what they love to do for so long. And, you know, you don't realize it. But then I, I talk to people who are like, oh, I'm going to retire. And I, I'm like, retire? 
Like, I'm gonna be making pots till I'm dead. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna stop. Even my students are like, oh, you're sick of this? I'm like, no, never, ever. Yeah. But even when I'm on vacation, I'm thinking about what's my next project. I can't believe I went on vacation. I have so much to do. You know, like it's just part of who we are, the art. Yeah, I just feel like we're very lucky to have that because a lot of people don't. And um, yep. we're just lucky to have that extra thing. And especially the, with the pandemic, I think art saved so many of us because we could focus on that even though we couldn't go anywhere. Exactly. Um, and it's just very important. I agree. Yeah. And it's important to have places where we can bring our art where people can see it. So if it wasn't for you guys and the gallery, you know, it would make a big difference. <laughs> there would be nobody to look at our work. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> gallery North. Amazing job. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>